Last class, we were discussing the MESPET, which is a device which is generally used with compound semiconductors, and we saw that uh, uh, the device uh, consists of an N type channel uh, on a semi insulating material, okay. Uh, depends on whether you are using gallium arsenide or indium phosphide. Uh, you will have semi insulating gallium arsenide or indium phosphide. You have uh, heavily doped regions for the formation of the source and drain. So, here you have the gate which controls the current, you have the source and you have the drain, the source, the drain and the gate. Okay. There is a depletion region between the source and the drain. Uh, in, in the channel region and uh, the gate voltage actually controls the thickness of this depletion region and thereby controls the current. Okay. Now, uh, we have seen that uh, you can have two types of uh, MESPETs, uh, the enhancement type and the depletion type. The enhancement type is the one which is normally off, okay. that is with zero gate voltage there is no current flowing. The symbol of this device is like this okay and uh, this is enhancement misfit and uh, you have the depletion misfit which is a normally on device okay and the symbol is like this okay uh, now uh, we have also seen finally the small signal equivalent circuit of this device, uh, it consists of a current source between the drain and source. So, this is the drain, this is the source, this is given by G M V G S, okay. uh, resistance, the drain resistance R D and the capacitances between the gate and source C G S and the capacitance between the gate and drain C G D. Okay, that is what we had uh, seen in the last class. Okay. Now, uh, let us try to look at some values of the uh, G M, okay, that is the transconductance. The uh, drain current of this MESPET okay, uh, can be given by I D is equal to uh, that is uh, the cross sectional area of the device that, uh, which is equal to uh, the width of the device okay, uh, 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 into the, uh, the uh, into this thickness okay, which is nothing but. So, if, if the depletion width is D and the total thickness of the N region is T, so that is going to be T minus D. So, if the width of the device is given as uh, W, so W into T minus D is the cross sectional area, Q the, the concentration of carriers N into velocity. We assume that the carriers are flowing at the saturation velocity, which is all correct uh, if uh, for modern day devices which have very short channel lengths and therefore very high electric fields. Now, the G m is given by G m is equal to del I d del V g s 
okay which is given which can be written as del i d del d okay which d is the thickness of the depletion layer to del d del v g s okay now from this relation del i d del del d will be equal to uh, minus w q n d v sat okay and now uh, uh, we have to look at the variation of d with respect to v g s okay now if you assume that the depletion layer width is almost a constant from the source to the drain end we can write that d is equal to okay twice epsilon uh, th uh, that is uh, then the VBI is the minus VGS by Q and D. All right. This is the drop across the depletion region. Okay. Now this gives rise to del D del VGS will be equal to minus of epsilon by Q and D into d okay which gives us gm is equal to uh, this nd d sorry nd will cancel q will cancel uh, you have epsilon w epsilon v sat by d okay Okay, so this is the GM of the device. GM is equal to W epsilon V sat by D. All right. Now let us take a mess fit. Let us consider a mess fit. Okay, and we apply a gate to source voltage VGS. Okay, and uh, all right, a small signal, a small VGS, and then we short the drain to source, and then the current flowing in is IG, and the drain to source current is ID. All right, now the current gain of this is AI is equal to ID by ig okay now uh, important parameter for the mesfet as well as for many other devices is the ft okay ft is defined as the frequency at which this current gain goes to unity all right now let us see how we can obtain this value of ft okay now in this circuit if you look at this we have applied the small signal vgs between the gate and the source Okay, the source is grounded, so VGS, and we have shorted the drain to the source. All right, and so the, what we have is IG. IG is the current flowing here, so IG will be given by this is the two capacitances here in parallel. So you have IG is equal to J omega CGS plus C G D V G S and okay and what is I D? I D is equal to G M V G S. Okay, therefore A I is equal to the current gain is equal to G M by the modulus of the current gain will be G M by omega C G S plus C G D. All right. Now, C G S plus C G D, that is the total capacitance, can be written as C G S plus C G D is equal to W into L, that is the area epsilon by the depletion width. Okay. Now, if we substitute it here, what we get is the value of gm we already know 
W epsilon V sat by D. Now we have CGS. So uh, you have omega here, D into W L epsilon D. Okay, this D will cancel. W will cancel. Epsilon will cancel. Okay, and we are left with V sat by omega L. Okay. Now, so the so this is the current gain V sat by omega L. All right. So the frequency at which the current gain goes to unity is given by F T is equal to V sat by twice pi L. All right. So the frequency at which the current gain is going to go to unity is V sat by twice pi L. All right. Now, so this is the F T of the device. Now, usually the V sat of the MOSFET is given as around 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second. Uh, so if you have L of 1 micron, which is 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter, okay, then F T will be according to this formula will be around 16 gigahertz. The important thing to note here is that F T is inversely proportional to L. So if you keep on reducing L, the F T will go up. So if you go from 1 micron to 0.1 micron, F T will go from 16 gigahertz to 160 gigahertz. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, we, uh, there are, uh, what will happen is, uh, if you go on reducing L, then there are other things, uh, parasitics, which may come into picture. In fact, in this relation, okay, this AI relation, okay, if you assume that there is a parasitic capacitance, that is, instead of GM by W C G S plus C G D, if you assume that AI is equal to GM by W C G S plus C G D plus C some parasitics, okay. then the F T value which you will get, okay, it can be written as 1 by F T is equal to 1 by uh, V sat by twice pi L plus 1 by GM by C parasitics. Okay, so when uh, what happens is when uh, the parasitic capacitance is if it is small, this term is going to be quite large. So it is actually the FT is controlled by this term. Is it and FT is going to be V sat by twice pi L. But when by reducing the channel length, okay, when this term becomes large, then this is the smaller term here. So this uh, is going to play a dominant role and the F T of the device is actually going to be uh, controlled by the parasitic capacitances. So if you go on reducing the channel length, you may not get a uh, reduction in, uh, in F T after a while because of the importance of the parasitics. But one thing important to note again here is that the G M plays a role here. If the GM of the device is high, then the effect of the parasitics is in fact reduced. All right. So, but uh, so uh, you see that uh, uh, to achieve a high FT, we must reduce the channel length of the device. Okay, and uh, uh, and after a while, of course, if you keep on reducing the channel length then the FT is determined by the parasitics. So it is also important to reduce the parasitic capacitances. But coming back to this expression here, FT is equal to V sat by twice pi L. Since the FT of the device is inversely proportional to L, we must always uh, make an effort to reduce the channel length as far as possible. So if we have a, a circuit, okay, uh, the channel lengths of the MOSFETs must be made as small as possible. So that has to be the minimum 
uh, afforded uh, which, uh, which the technology can take. So if you have a one micron technology, the channel lengths of all the devices are kept at one micron. You see that the widths of the devices do not come into picture here, and because the, uh, the FT is not uh, controlled by the width. You can look at it this way, that if we increase the width of the device, it is true that the input capacitances go up, but again, the currents are also going to go up because the current is proportional to width. So you have a larger current driving a larger capacitance, so the time required to charge the cap or discharge the capacitance remains the same. Whereas if you have, uh, if you increase the channel length of the device, you increase the capacitance without a corresponding increase in current, so the FT will go down. So basically, the channel length must be retained at the minimum. So that is what is done in any mesh fed circuit. The channel lengths of all the devices are maintained at the minimum value and we play around with the width of the device okay, to design a better circuit. Okay. So with this background, we shall now come, uh, we shall start our discussion on mesh fed logic circuits. And as usual, uh, we shall take up the inverter first. Okay and then try to see how these uh, circuits involving inverters uh, can be modified to form other gates. Okay. Uh, so the inverter circuit which we have is very similar to other inverter circuits of the MOS family. Okay. What uh, a simple inverter would have a MOSFET okay, and a load resistance. Okay, we call the drain resistance. Okay, the input voltage is applied here, and the output voltage is here. Okay, <coughs> and uh, the way to find out the input-output characteristics is also quite simple and uh, similar uh, to other uh, most uh, in, uh, logic circuits. That is, we first draw the drain current versus the input voltage which is the uh, gate, uh, sorry drain current versus the drain to source voltage that is the output characteristics of the device which looks like this and then we draw the load line now if this is a resistance the draw load line is going to be something like this okay and this value is ID is VDD by RD. We know that. And this is VDD. This is okay. Now this also behaves as an amplifier, and the gain of the amplifier, voltage gain, is equal to you know minus GM RD. Okay. So uh, for a good uh, inverter, the gain of the amplifier must be high. That is, the transition from the high state to the low state must take place at a rapid rate. That is, for a small change in the input voltage, we must have a, a sharp transition from the high to the low level. Now, this depends on RD. So, if you have a higher value of RD, so this is suppose a low value of RD. If you have a high value of RD, then the load line is going to be something like this. Here, it is going to be VDD by RD, say this is RD1, this is RD2, RD2 is at a higher value than RD1. Now if, if you increase the value of RD, uh, it, it is expected that the gain may go up from this relation, but that is not true because this GM also depends on the current. So if we are increasing the value of RD, the device is going to operate at a lower value of current as we see here, and the GM is proportional to the uh, current. So at lower values of GM, the, at lower values of the drain current, the GM is lower. So in fact, we do not get a high gain as such as we could expect from this relationship. Okay? So uh, uh, this resistance as a load is not usually, uh, is not a very popular uh, circuit. Uh, the circuit which is used generally is having an active device, okay, uh, a depletion mode MESFET as a load, and with ha which has its gate to source shorted, and the driver device 
is uh, another misfit here. Okay. Now, this driver device can be an enhancement type device, it can be a depletion type device, it does not really matter at this point. Okay. So, if you consider this device here, now the load line which you have is actually going to be the characteristic of the driver device. This is a depletion mode load with VGS is equal to 0. Now, since this is a depletion mode device, it is a normally on device. So, the even for VGS is equal to 0, the device is going to conduct. Okay. So, the characteristic of the device at VGS is equal to 0 should be used at the, as the load line. So, it is maybe something like this. Okay. So, this is the load line. So, this is the depletion load. All right. Now, if you look at this uh, curve, now if you want to plot the input output characteristics, V i, V output, okay. when V i is low, that is the gate to source voltage is low, then the operating point is given by the intersection of the IV uh, characteristics of the driver device and the load line. So, at low voltages, output is nearly equal to V d d. Okay. And then, <coughs> what happens is, what you have is in this region, okay, where the load characteristics is almost flat, okay, for a small change in the input voltage, okay, the output uh, voltage falls, changes drastically from a high value to a low value. So, if you take two very closely spaced curves, one curve here and another curve here. Okay. For a small change in gate to source voltage, the point of intersection changes from here to here. So, the output voltage falls sharply. So, you have something like this and then it falls sharply and then if you go on increasing the gate voltage, there is a small change. Okay. So, this is the input output characteristics of, uh, the, uh, of the inverter here. Okay, which has a depletion mode load. Now, the advantage here is, if you look at it, the, uh, the important point of the characteristics is this region, okay, and in this region, the IV characteristics is almost parallel to the x-axis, so it actually behaves as a very high resistance. Okay. At the same time, the operation is, uh, takes place at a high value of current. Okay. So, what do you have, if you go back to this relationship, a V is equal to minus G M R D. Okay, since the uh, the transition, okay, from the high level to low level takes place at a high value of current, G M is high. At the same time, the effective drain resistance is also very high because the uh, I V characteristics is almost parallel to the x axis. So both of them are high, and you have a very high gain. So this is the uh, g this gives rise to a characteristic like this and we have a very high gain at this portion that is in the transition region from the high to the low level. Of course, one point is to be noted in this, uh, in this circuit, since the load device is always on, it is not going to be off like a CMOS, the output voltage never actually uh, does not really go to a zero value. Okay? It approaches zero for high input voltages, but it does not really go to a zero value. Okay. So, this is the circuit okay, of the inverter which we shall take up and is usually used in all MOSFET logic circuits. Okay. And several modifications are made for realizing different types of logic families. Okay. Uh, we shall first take up the logic family which is called DCFL. Okay. DCFL which stands for direct coupled FET logic, direct coupled FET logic. Okay. Now, this circuit consists of an inverter. This is the basic inverter for this logic family. It consists of an enhancement type 
driver transistor and a depletion type load transistor where the gate to source uh, of the load transistor is shorted. Okay. Now, if we take such a circuit okay, and uh, consider that this is connected to the input of another gate that is basically one inverter driving an inverter, another inverter. Let us look at the characteristics of this logic family. Okay. Now, uh, let us go back and draw the load line again. Okay. Draw the characteristics and the load line to obtain the uh, input output characteristics. So, we have the I V characteristics of the driver transistor okay. and what we do is we draw the I V characteristics of the load okay, which is a depletion mode load okay, and V G S is equal to 0. Okay, so, this is the characteristics of the load device. Okay. Now, uh, in this circuit, let U VDD is 1.5 volts. That is the usual voltages at which the DC uh, FL direct coupled FET logic circuits operate. All right. Now, another point to note here is that this output of this inverter is actually driving the input of the next gate. Okay. Now, in a MOSFET circuit, in a MOSFET device, we know that the input, the gate, if we, okay, if we come back to this uh, MOSFET uh, uh, cross section view of the MOSFET, what we have is a short key diode. Okay. A short key diode is a metal semiconductor junction diode and it behaves as a normal diode. Okay, the characteristics is like a normal diode and it has got a cut in voltage. So, if the uh, voltage across the device, forward bias across the device exceeds the uh, cut in voltage, there is going to be conduction. Okay, it, the characteristics of the short key diode is just like a diode, another diode. Okay, it is something like this. So, once the input voltage exceeds this value, the, there is going to be conduction and the voltage is clamped to almost this value. Okay. For a compound semiconductor like gallium arsenide, the cut in voltage here okay, is around 0.7 volts, okay. which means that if the input voltage, the gate to source voltage uh, the, cannot exceed 0.7 volts, because there is going to be heavy conduction and the input voltage gets clamped at 0.7 volts. So, if you come back to this circuit here, it means that the output voltage of this inverter here is, is going to get clamped at 0.7 volts. This voltage here cannot exceed 0.7 volts, because it is connected to the input here, which has a diode here with, with a cut in voltage of 0.7 volts. So, what we do is in this uh, figure here, we draw another curve like this. Okay, which, which is actually the characteristic of the diode, and this is around 0.65 or 0.7 volts. Okay, say 0.65 volts. Let us put it at that. So, what happens is this output voltage of the device cannot exceed this value. Okay, now uh, this, this is the maximum value that the output voltage can have because it is going to be clamped by this. Okay, now. Let us assume that uh, uh, the VTE, that is the, the threshold voltage of the enhancement mode device is 0.15 volts. Okay. So, this, this can be 0.2 volts, this can be uh, 0.3 volts, this can be uh, say 0.35. 0.4 like this. Okay. I am just drawing some values of the input voltage for which these are the characteristics. Okay. Now, what happens is, if you look at this, when the input voltage is 0.2 volts, this is the curve, the point of intersection is here, but this is on the, uh, the output voltage can at, can at most be at this value. 
okay, it cannot be this value. So, the output voltage is going to be clamped at almost 0.7 volts. Okay. So, if we go on increasing the input voltage 0.3 volts, again this point of intersection is here, but the output voltage is actually going to be here because it cannot exceed this value, it cannot be more than this value. 0.35 again it is here. So, the output voltage is almost a constant, okay, it remains a constant okay, given by this curve. So, at 0.4 volts also it is here, okay. so it is at 0.4 volts, but then what happens? If we now exceed the input voltage slightly above 0.4 volts, okay, say this one is 0.45, okay, what happens is the point of intersection of this and this comes here. So, from 0.4 to 0.45, the output voltage falls from 0.7 volts uh, to a very small value. So, here this can, this can be around 0.4 volts. Okay this is 0.4 volts. So, it has fallen sharply okay, as we go above 0.4 volts and then this is a very small value and if we go on increasing the input voltage, okay, the points of intersection will move a little uh, sm slightly and the input voltage will keep falling. So, this is the output voltage of the output voltage characteristics of the DCFL inverter where this is 0.7 volts. Uh, the logic high is 0.7 volts and the logic low keeps uh, the, and the output voltage keeps falling as we increase the input voltage. Okay. So, we see that we have a flat characteristics here okay, that is because of the fact that the output voltage is clamped to 0.7 volts and then there is a sharp drop and then it approaches uh, gradually approaches 0. Okay. Now, the important point for this inverter is that uh, the output voltage, okay, so when the input voltage approaches 0.7 volts, that is when the input voltage is high, the output voltage should be low enough. So, if you go to look at this inverter, when the input voltage is high, say so Vh, the output voltage is low, Vl, okay, and this low value must be less than the threshold voltage of this device. Okay, which is as we have assumed 0.15 volts say. So, V L must be less than 0.15 volt, so that this device is turned off okay. and then when this device is turned off, the output can again approach uh, V H. Okay. So, this is a design criteria that uh, when input is high, the output voltage should go below the threshold voltage of the inverter. Now, how do you control the output voltage at this point? The, the logic low value, how do you control? It is controlled by the ratio of the widths of the driver and the load transistor. So, this is the driver transistor. So, it has a width W D, this has the width W L, okay, that is the width of the transistor. As we have already said, the channel lengths of these devices are the same and equal to the minimum value afforded by that technology. Okay. Now, V O L, the logic low is proportional to W D by W L. So, if we make the width of the driver device larger compared to the width of the uh, uh, load device, then the output voltage is going to fall. Okay. All right. So, uh, that is how we can make the, uh, the output voltage lower, okay. but of course, we do not want to make the width very large because that is going to increase the input capacitance of this device and which is going to slow down this device. Okay, but at the same, so what we can do is, uh, so for that, uh, but we want VOL should be less than VTE. Now we cannot make VTE very large either. That is the threshold voltage of the enhancement device. We cannot make it large in order that VOL will always be less than VTE. That is not possible because if VTE is large, what happens is the current or the GM of the transistors are proportional to VGS minus VTE. Okay. So, the, the GM of the transistor is proportional to VGS minus VTE. Now, if VTE is large, you know VGS maximum can be 0.7 volts. So, you see that the GM of the device, okay, which is proportional to VGS minus VTE is going to be small. So, we want VTE to be small, so that VGS minus VTE is large. So, we have a high uh, 
uh, gain of the device. So, the design, okay, the design will involve uh, of a particular good circuit is we want VTE low, at the same time we want VOL to be even lower, okay, and that is why we have to uh, increase WD by WL, but we should not make it too large because that is going to affect the speed of the circuit. We should make it just enough, okay, so that we get high speed at the same time a good characteristic. Okay, so this is the uh, inverter uh, circuit using in the DCFL logic family. Now, uh, once we have the inverter, we have to go for other logic circuits. Okay, the basic logic circuit in the DCFL is going to be the NOR gate. Okay, in a NOR gate, what we do is, okay, uh, we have uh, another device in parallel. This is again also like a MOS logic circuit. This is the same thing which we do in case of MOS. Okay. We have a, another driver transistor in parallel. So, what happens is when any of these input are high, okay, the, that particular uh, transistor is going to conduct and is going to pull down the output, okay, which means that in, when any input goes high, output is low. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, 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 function of a NOR gate. Okay, that when any input is low, uh, when any input is high, output is low. So we may connect a number of in, uh, transistors in parallel. So if you have want a three input NOR gate, we have three transistors in parallel, and so on. Okay, so the DCFL logic family is a popular logic family in MESFET logic family is. You see the advantages are, there are many advantages. Uh, one is of course the simple circuit. Circuit is very simple. It requires very few transistors as such and, uh, uh, and it is actually suitable for very large scale integration because of this fact. Also, you require a very low power supply voltage. Okay? Uh, it is just 1.5 volt power supply sufficient because if we look at this uh, curve here, okay, we are only operating in this region, okay, that is from 0 to 0 0.7 volts. Uh, we just put 1.5 volts because uh, this load line, okay, the load line which you have, this transistor must be in the saturation region, the load transistor. So, if we bring it closer, if we say make it 1 volt, then in this region it may not be in the saturation region from 0 to 0.7 volts. We, so, we just require a power supply voltage sufficiently large so that we have this transistor in the saturation region. So, the load line actually is uh, almost parallel to the x axis. So, you just require about 1.5 volts. So, the, lo the low uh, power supply voltage ensures low power dissipation. So, you have a uh, simple circuit, less number of transistors, low power dissipation, both of which are uh, important factors in large scale integration. Okay. One problem of course is that you require both enhancement and depletion mode transistors on the same chip, okay, which may create problems. Okay. You require a superior technology for that, but of course uh, technology is something okay, uh, that this tech, uh, people have mastered now and uh, a lot of circuits are being in fact made on this using this DCFL concept. In fact, I will just give you an example okay, in a recent uh, paper. Okay, uh, they have referred to a 100K uh, gate array, that is a gate array which consists of 100K transistors, that is 10 to the power 5 transistors. Okay, such a large number of transistors on a single chip okay. uh, in using gallium arsenide technology that is quite remarkable. Okay, because although for silicon this may not be so great, but for gallium arsenide this is uh, quite an achievement. I okay. will uh, just give you the features, process 0.5 micron. So, it uses 0.5 micron technology, which means that the channel lengths are 0.5 micron logic DCFL direct coupled FET logic. Okay. Total gates 100K that is 
10 to the power 5 that is 100,000 gates I O interface hundred and seventy six pin TTL or ECL both are available. So, whether you want TTL or ECL both types of interfaces are available. Delay times twenty two point five picoseconds for an inverter and uh, 131 picoseconds for 3 input NOR and with a fan out of 3 and 1 millimeter interconnect. So, all this with all this the interconnect line is 1 millimeter long. So, you have 3 input NOR gate, fan out is 3 and 1 millimeter interconnect line, the delay time is 131 picoseconds. And finally, the power dissipation is 0.4 milliwatt per gate. So, this is a gate array which has been uh, realized using direct coupled FET logic. This shows that direct coupled FET logic is nowadays being seriously thought of as a means of realizing very high speed logic circuits. Okay, I just give you the reference also. It is uh, OTA, A OTA et al. Uh, this is uh, IEEE Journal of Solid State Circuits, volume 34, number 1. Page 33 to 41, January 1999. So, this is a recent effort, okay, and uh, we have really, they have really realized a very large scale, a large scale uh, integrated circuit using DC FL, and they have realized uh, uh, some, a lot of circuitry using this uh, gate array. Okay. Now, so this is we have seen that uh, this DCFL is a circuit which can be used for high speed circuits and uh, it has in fact been used to realize high speed circuits and large scale integrated circuits. But there is one uh, major problem with DCFL which we shall now look into. Uh, when the input goes high, okay, then what happens is suppose the input goes was low the output was high at this point the output was high okay now when the input goes high the output is going to go low okay for the output to go low what ha what we must have uh, is the the output capacitance here which is the input capacitance of this next gate that has to be discharged and the the discharge should take place through the driver transistor the driver transistor must discharge it but the problem here is that the load transistor is always on. Okay? So, the discharge current, if you say the discharge current, I discharge, is actually the driver current minus the load current. Okay? That is, the load current is always on. So, the driver current minus the load current is going to discharge it. So, since the load current is, uh, is quite appreciable, Okay, the discharging current is quite small. On the other hand, when you take the other transition, that is, when the input goes low, since the input, uh, the low input is less than the threshold voltage of this device, this device is off. Okay, so the output capacitance can be charged by the load transistor. The full current goes to charge the load transistor. Okay, so uh, the charging current is equal to I L. Okay? So, there is a very large disparity between the uh, on times and off times of this device. The off times that is the time uh, required to discharge the output capacitance is quite large compared to the on time of this device. Okay? So, how to uh, improve this? Okay? So, there is another logic family which is actually a derivative of this logic family which can be used to improve the performance. What is done is, 
in that logic family okay we have another enhancement mode another two enhancement mode devices okay and the output of this or the first stage goes as input here to the input of this enhancement mode device and the drivers of the two are shorted so this is the output here okay now what happens is the all this these three are enhancement mode devices we have one uh, depletion mode device now if the input is low then both these driver transistors are off okay this transistor is on okay this transistor is on which means that the output goes high which turns on this uh, uh, transistor here that is the uh, in, uh, the load transistor of the second stage and since this transistor is on it is going to pull up the output capacitance output capacitance the charging current now is equal to il okay now what look at the other situation when the input is high when the input is high the, uh, both the lower transistors the driver transistors are on now this is an inverter this behaves as an inverter so what is going to happen is this output here is going to go low okay and as this output goes low this transistor the load device of the second stage that is going to turn off okay so in the second stage which is actually uh, uh, driving the capacitance the the load device is off so the discharging current is only the i discharge is equal to i driver okay so the charging current is the current of the load device when this is off okay the lower device is off and the discharging current is the current of the uh, of the driver device the load device is off so basically you have a sort of cmos type of thing where only one device is on and one can achieve uh, equal rise and fall times in fact the super buffer this is called a super buffer fet logic the name is s b f l it's called the super buffer fet logic okay it is a faster logic compared to dcfl because the uh, we do not have the especially uh, when the output capacitance is discharged we do not have the load transistor on so the output capacitance can be discharged faster so this is a faster logic family com uh, compared to dcfl but you have to pay in terms of extra number of transistors okay so this is a basic inverter circuit of a sbfl where you have three enhancement mode devices and one load uh, depletion mode device so four transistors make up the inverter if you want to have a nor gate okay basically the circuit what you would have is you would have a first stage three input nor gate i draw it like this okay now this output of this nor gate is here the three input nor gate okay all these three enhancement mode devices the output of this nor gate goes to here and then you have other transistors in parallel another aspect enhancement mode device parallel so this is a three input nor gate just like uh, uh, normal dcfl nor gate three input nor gate okay and the output is fed here and th there is another nor gate structure here so when any input goes high when any input goes high the lower part will go off okay the lower part will conduct here so that the output goes low this is turned off and similarly there is another transistor here which goes off it is going to conduct it is going to discharge the output capacitance okay well this is off and while uh, when all inputs uh, are low then uh, the the enhance uh, this transistor the low transistor here turns on which makes this on and all these are off okay, because basically they are the same inputs connected here okay so the uh, the output load can be charged through this load transistor so base so we now have a three input nor gate here we require 
8 transistors compared uh, to the 4 transistors required in the case of DCFL. Okay. So, again this is going to be a faster logic circuit compared to the DCFL, but again you have to pay for it in, the, in terms of the number of transistors. And this one will also have the super buffer FET logic is also going to have equal rise and fall times, which is not the case in the case of DCFL. So, we have looked at uh, the two logic families here, DCFL and its derivative, the super buffer FET logic. We shall consider uh, some other logic circuits in the next class.